Olga from Minerva and today I wanted to share with you my top 10 vintage patterns for the autumn winter season. All of these patterns are available on our website so I will leave them all linked below so you can check them out. The first pattern that I wanted to share with you is actually the only uh, men's pattern that I thought I would include and it is the McCall's 2447. This is a pattern for men's shirts specifically. It also includes the pattern for a vest and a bow tie and a, a regular tie. They include a few options of sleeve, a few options of collar, and also a couple of choices for your bow ties and ties. So this is definitely a super versatile pattern. I think it's a great staple for your wardrobe and yeah, definitely looks like a relatively easy make. Then the next pattern that I have here is also a McCall's and this one is from 1933 and it is the McCall's 6993. This is for a skirt and it actually has two options of skirt. One of them has a kind of front yoke uh, which is lined and then you have the option without the yoke and that one is a bit more loose fitted and it does include a belt. The 30s and 40s are my favorite eras to kind of draw inspiration from so I love 30s patterns and I think again a staple for your wardrobe. I would definitely make um, option B first. Next we're moving on to Butrick and they have the retro line and the first pattern that I wanted to share with you from them is the 6242. Uh, this is from this year 1960 and it is for this really beautiful dress. It's kind of like a pullover dress. It's kind of like a boat neckline. It's cinched at the waist and then you have the two skirt options. So you could make this with the full skirt that is typical of the, of the early 60s, late 50s or you could go more fitted. Um, I think B is almost like a pencil skirt, so I think that would also look really, really great. But I personally find that fuller skirts are more comfortable. I definitely would make um, a first. The next butcheric pattern that I wanted to share with you is from 1953, and it is the 5708. And this is a cocktail dress, and the reason I included a cocktail dress on my list was because as soon as I thought autumn winter, my first thought was, okay, so in winter you're definitely going to have parties, you're definitely going to have like a Christmas party, a um, New Year's party, you're gonna have, you know, office dinners, you're gonna have work things, you're gonna have friends meeting, you're gonna have all of these events that you're gonna want to go to. And normally people tend to dress up for these events. So that means that you're gonna need a dressier kind of outfit. The reason I chose this, this specific um, retro dress is because you have only one option of skirt. This is true, but you have five bodice options and that is quite a lot. They're all different enough from each other that they make totally different outfits and totally different dresses. So I think this is a really beautiful option. I believe that if you wanted to, you could Frankenstein this with a different kind of skirt. The next Butterick pattern we have is another one from their retro line and it is the 6374. This one is from 1944. I really like this one as well. I'm re I really want to make this. Um, obviously, I like all of them. That's why they're in my top 10. I think this one is um, similar to all the dresses that I've been showing you from the butt trick. Uh, the difference is it's a little bit more like the one from 1960 where you can dress it up and dress it down. The other cool thing is that it has long sleeves and you see a lot of quarter length sleeves for dresses but you don't see that many long sleeve dresses and I personally like long sleeve dresses because we don't really have the habit like they did in this era of wearing gloves so that's why a lot of uh, vintage dresses are quarter length sleeves is because they would wear gloves but we don't really have that habit nowadays so I find that I like long sleeve I prefer longer sleeve dresses so this is a really great option and then you have the two options of um, necklines so one of them has a bit of a fuller collar and the other one is a, a bit more slim uh, they're both super chic. I just think this would be really flattering on anyone. You have that classic kind of boxier shape from the 40s and I just think this is so, so, so gorgeous. Next dress is again from 1944 and also from Butterick and this one is the 6485. I love this one because again you have the versatility of the long sleeves and the short sleeves. I think this one is a bit more casual and it would make a really good staple dress for everyday wear. It's sort of more loose fitting so I think that would be more com make it more comfortable as well if you don't really like things that are so uh, shape hugging, I guess. It has a back zipper that has the little front tuck details and um, then at the back it ties with a little bow. Then from Vogue, we have from their vintage line the 9346 and this one is from 1947. 1947 was when 
the uh, Christian Dior came out with a new look silhouette and that's when the silhouette went from kind of more um, straight and it did hug a little bit at the waist before 1947 but it was a bit more kind of boxy like I said earlier and then from 1947 after Dior came out with new look then it became the kind of fuller skirt we also started having these kind of really slim waists and really big skirts and that's kind of when these this period started so it's really interesting that a pattern from 1947 would not be including this silhouette yet they would still be using an older silhouette so that's really interesting a little bit of history for you there so for this one you have two variations and the only difference from version a and version b is the sleeve length again like i said before i really like long sleeves and that's why i included this because i think this would make a really great staple if you have a party and you want to wear something that's nice but not as you know fancy as a cocktail dress then this is a really great option because it's fitted it has nice details at the front uh, it has the little bow and it also has a really nice back tux so it has a lot of detail and a lot of a lot of interest points but it's not so flashy and so kind of there's not a lot of cleavage there's not a lot of it's a bit more modest and a bit more casual than a cocktail dress i believe you could make this with a few different fabrics it actually includes jersey as a fabric you could use for this so that's a really interesting choice that you don't see that much in vintage fat patterns the next one from vogue we have is the 8875 pattern and this is from 1955 and like i said before now that it's after 1947, we have this kind of more new look um, inspired silhouette. So we have the fuller skirt. Basically, you get the pattern for the dress, which is short sleeved. Uh, it's nice and fitted and it has a belt actually. Uh, so it includes the pattern for the belt as well. And then you have the kind of coat that is sort of looks like a cape to me um, a little bit. It's somewhere between a coat and a cape. Um, and it actually has a detachable collar so you could do like a fur collar detail or a faux fur collar detail I think that would look super cute and then you could kind of mix and match again the dress is super super straightforward it has a really nice uh, a really nice fit it's something that you could wear every day to work you know if you work in an office a really beautiful design for everyday wear and then you have the coat that adds all of this extra volume and all of this extra interest. I think it's such a fun pattern. Uh, and again, this one is for more intermediate sewists. Next up, we're moving to Simplicity and they make a really good vintage range of patterns. And the interesting thing about them is that they actually use a lot of eras. They don't just do stuff from the 40s and the 50s. They do stuff from the 70s, from the 80s. Um, from the 60s so they have a, a big big range of patterns so the pattern that we're going to be looking at here from them is 8509 and this is a 1950s vintage coat the only thing with simplicity is that they don't specify a year that they made this they only specify that it's from the 50s or the 40s etc so we know it's from the 50s and this is a coat I think obviously if we're talking autumn winter we definitely have to include at least one coat. We already have the coat in the Vogue pattern. You have the full length, which is just below the knee. Uh, and then you have a shorter length, which I think would hit around the hip area, maybe a little bit lower, depending on how tall you are. They have two sleeve variations for this coat. One is a just a straight sleeve, and the other one has a cuff that makes it... Um, a balloon sleeve if you want to start a vintage wardrobe definitely invest in making a vintage inspired coat uh, and the reason I suggest this is because if you are wearing modern coats with vintage dresses you are going to have some weird fits not very comfortable and it normally ruins the silhouette that you're trying to create underneath all of the effort that you're putting on underneath is going to show through and it's honestly since I feel like since I made my first vintage inspired coat my winter wardrobe kind of exploded and it really changed the game for me so i definitely recommend that you make something like this and the last pattern that i wanted to show you today is also from simplicity and this is the 8736 this is a 1940s vintage pattern and this is a pattern that includes a lot of variation for blouses i think again blouses huge staple for your wardrobe you can wear them with skirts you can wear them with dresses you can wear them with trousers if you're a trousers wearer i know i didn't include any trousers in this list because i personally don't really wear trousers and i think this pattern has so much variety that you could really make almost an infinite amount of blouses you have three different kind of sleeve variations you have a short sleeve you have a kind of 
even shorter sleeve which isn't really sleeveless then you have the long sleeve which I think would be really suitable for winter. You also have three different collar variations. You have two different kinds of Peter Pan collars. One of them includes more detail than the other. And you also have a short sort of Victorian-esque uh, collar, which I think is really, really cute. Again, this pattern, because we're in the 40s, accounts for you to wear shoulder pads, which is, it does say it's optional, but just so you know, there's that option there. Um, if you're a big shoulder pad wearer, or if not, um, it's not as bad as it seems. The 80s made it look really bad, but it's actually not that bad. So that is my top 10 vintage patterns of autumn winter. I think using these, you'd have a really good selection of different kinds of dresses, different kinds of skirts and blouses and staples that you could build a really nice wardrobe on. Um, I tried to include a few different eras so I wouldn't be too niche. My area of knowledge and of interest is going to be different to maybe other people who like to wear vintage. If you are interested in vintage clothing and not the eras that I mentioned in this video, do check out our website because we have a really big selection of vintage patterns and there's stuff from every era. So I would definitely explore the website if I were you. I will link everything that I mentioned in this video below so you can have more easily access to it and if you do make any of these patterns and you use any of them please share them with us we love to see your creations and we would be so glad to know that uh, we inspired you somehow that is everything from me for today i hope you enjoyed this video and that it gave you some inspiration and i hope you will join me in future videos Bye.